Is it worth it to try and become an actuary in 2021? In this video, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of choosing this relatively small niche occupation. We're going to go over compensation, the job market, educational requirements, and more to really help you understand whether this occupation is for you. But first, what is an actuary and what do they do? Actuaries analyze statistical data such as mortality, accidents, sickness, disabilities, and retirement rates. They actually construct probability tables to forecast risk and liability. If you're interested in working as an actuary, you are most likely going to be working in the insurance industry. In fact, 76% of actuaries work in the finance and insurance industry, 11% work in professional scientific and tech services, only 4% of actuaries work for the government. This is the perfect occupation for someone that really likes analyzing data, creating statistical models, creating charts and graphs, and really studying the financial costs of risk and uncertainty. You have to have a good understanding of mathematics, statistics, financial theory, and you might even need to be able to code as well. This occupation is for someone that likes to work with computers. Actuaries also collaborate with programmers, underwriters, accountants, claims experts, and management. The base educational requirement to become an actuary actually isn't that high. According to the Occupational Information Network, 63% of actuaries just have a bachelor's degree, 25% have a bachelor's degree plus some kind of certificate, and 13% have some kind of professional degree. But this doesn't cover the fact that actuaries have to take a lot of exams to progress all through their career. So even after getting a bachelor's degrees, many actuaries do another four to seven years of taking exams and progressing and trying to be able to create insurance contracts for a wide variety of different industries. So this might not be the best occupation if you really hate taking tests because there's going to be a lot of exams even after attaining a bachelor's degree. So let's get into one of the biggest pros of becoming an actuary in 2020, and that is compensation. Actuaries are compensated very well. According to the government in 2020, the average base salary for an actuary, assuming 40 hour work weeks, was $123,180. This was more than accountants, budget analysts, cost estimators. It was more than economists. It was more than personal financial advisors, but it was less than financial managers. And a lot of accountants and financial professionals eventually become financial managers if they play their cards right. And actuaries have seen pretty solid wage growth over the years. In the year 2000, the average base salary for an actuary was $72,470. This grew to $123,180 in 2020. This gives us a two decade wage growth of about $2,000 per year. But when you just look at the past five years, wage growth for actuaries has increased a bit to about $2,100 per year. Using the two decade wage growth number, we can assume that by 2024, the average base salary for an actuary would be around 131,000 per year. And by 2030, around 143,000 per year. But definitely keep in mind, this is an average national number. For actuaries, there's actually quite a bit of wage inequality among actuaries. In fact, a starting salary for an actuary would probably be around the 10th percentile in terms of pay. That's actually around 66,000 per year. Whereas an actuary that has a lot of experience and a lot of certifications, the top 10% of actuaries earn more than 196,000 per year. So there's quite a few actuaries earning over 200,000 per year. If you get all your certifications done and you start accruing lots of experience. So employed actuaries can do really well financially. So let's get into one con of becoming an actuary. And that is the self-employment rate. It seems that only about 2% of actuaries are self-employed. Not many of these professionals are taking their experience as an actuary and starting their own shops. This could be some actuaries that are just working as 1099 contractors, but I'm sure there's also some other actuaries that have started their own company, but this is a very small amount of people. We can actually compare this to personal financial advisors where one out of every five personal financial advisor owns their own business. So this might not be the best occupation for someone that's very entrepreneurial, ambitious, and really wants to set up their own empire. The other slight con of becoming an actuary is you are salaried. Employers do not actually have to compensate you for time spent above 40 hours a week. I've done a lot of videos on plumbers, elevator mechanics, nurses. All of these professionals get time and a half above 40 hours a week because the government forces employers to give 
these professionals time and a half after 40 hours a week. This is not so with actuaries and other professional occupations. This means that they could be working 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week, and employers aren't forced to compensate them accordingly. Now, employers can still compensate them in some, maybe form of a bonus at the end of the year, but this is optional. They aren't forced to. So next up, we're actually going to talk about the jobs market. How competitive is it to become an actuary? The first thing to understand is this is a very small niche occupation. In 2020, the government recorded 22,488 employed actuaries in the entire United States. This is far less. This is so much less than the number of accountants and auditors, about 1.2 million. This is less than cost estimators, financial managers. There's a lot of other occupations that have a much bigger workforce than this. But despite being such a small workforce, the workforce for actuaries actually has been growing pretty steadily over the past two decades. In the year 2000, there was 12,890 employed actuaries. This rose to 22,480 in 2020. So the workforce has actually almost doubled in about two decades. And the government forecasts that this solid wage growth year over year is set to continue. They're actually projecting a 24% increase in the number of actuaries over the next 10 years. The government is extremely bullish on future job growth of actuaries, more so than accountants, budget analysts, cost estimators. And interestingly, there's going to be 2% less underwriters over the next 10 years as well. So there's slanted to be a lot of job growth in this particular occupation. This is due to the actuary workforce being a bit older. They're anticipating a lot of actuaries to retire over the next 10 years. Also, the insurance industry is expected to grow by leaps and bounds. The insurance industry is actually an extremely lucrative industry. And that, in fact, a lot of people don't know this, but this is actually how Warren Buffett, one of the most richest people in the entire world, made his money. A lot of his wealth is because of his investments within the insurance business. The insurance business can be extremely profitable and lucrative. When we think of the insurance industry, we really just think of health insurance, life insurance, disability insurance, homeowners insurance, and auto insurance. These are the products that we're going to purchase year by year. But in reality, there are so many different types of insurance. There is pet insurance. There is space insurance. There is vehicle insurance, travel insurance, debt insurance. And in the future, there's actually going to be some really interesting types of insurance, like all these self-driving cars via Waymo. They, they might have some kind of insurance. There might be drone insurance. There might be all these drones delivering Amazon packages in the future, and they might need some type of insurance. In fact, there's even insurance companies that insure other insurance companies. There are to be greater and greater insurance products in the future, and this would boost the employment of actuaries. So all these predictions regarding the job growth of actuaries are great, but what is actually going on right now? How much demand for actuaries are there in 2021? Well, I typically use three different job platforms to really determine, give us like a real-time estimate of the demand for actuaries. I use Glassdoor, Indeed, and LinkedIn.com. I do a search for actuaries in the United States. On Glassdoor.com, I found 1,188 job opportunities for actuaries in the US. On Indeed, 2,030. And on LinkedIn, 16,980 job opportunities for actuaries in the US. When we compare the number of job opportunities on these three very popular job boards against the number of employed actuaries in the workforce, it looks amazing. There is quite a large demand for actuaries right now in the United States. Now, it's really hard to get these particular certifications and you have to go through all these exams. And I'm sure a lot of these job opportunities want those kinds of certifications, which are hard to get. But as of right now, there is a lot of demand for actuaries. So that's definitely a pro to becoming an actuary in 2021. But let's get into one last con. Because this is a such a small workforce of only 23,000 people, it is extremely regional. There are not a lot of employed actuaries in certain metro areas in the United States. This means that you might have to cross state lines, move to a different state, metro area, locality in order to begin working as an actuary because there's just parts of the U.S. that don't have any job opportunities for actuaries. The hotspots, actually more the hotspot 
to become an actuary is the New York City metro area. New York employed around 2,500 actuaries in 2021. This is the state of New York. On the other end is Chicago, and Illinois actually also employed about 2,200 actuaries in the United States. So these metro areas employ the vast majority of actuaries in the country. So you have to ask yourself, do you want to live in one of the metro areas that has job opportunities for actuaries? Finally, one thing people enjoy doing is taking, say, a Myers-Briggs personality test, try and figure out their type, and then compare their type against people in different occupations. According to the Myers-Briggs company, there are certain personality types that are attracted to certain occupations. For actuaries, the most common Myers-Briggs type to become or work as an actuary is the inspector, the ISTJ. About 20% of employed actuaries are ISTJs. This is followed by the ESTJ, the director. Number four is the thinker, INTP, followed by the architect, INTJ, ISFJ, and then ENTJ. Notice that all of these types tend to have a preference for thinking, over feeling. And also most of these personality types have a preference for introversion over extroversion. So as you can see, there are pros and cons to becoming an actuary in 2021. Actuaries are compensated extremely well. It only requires a bachelor's degree, but even after a bachelor's degree, you have to go through a lot of exams to get certified. And you really have to go through these exams to progress as an actuary. This is an extremely regional occupation. You might have to move to very specific areas of the United States to work as an actuary. But the future looks really good for actuaries. There's such a demand right now. And economists pretty much agree this is a pretty good field to go into. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.